Hi, my name is Paula and I'm a writer at Distillery. Greetings from my home office. The other day I was talking with my team about GIFs, um, whether you pronounce them GIFs or GIFs, whether they make you laugh or they make you cringe. One thing is for sure, you probably come across them all the time because they're everywhere online. And there's a reason for that and we decided to investigate. So first of all, how did GIFs even come about? Here's a brief history. GIFs were first invented in 1987 by a developer called Steve Wilhite and his team at CompuServe. By the way, Steve pronounces it with a soft G, so GIF, but I prefer GIF because it stands for Graphic Interchange Format. The graphic interchange format came about because Steve and his team needed a solution before the advent of the World Wide Web for sharing images in um, relatively good resolution, but without taking too much computer memory or slowing down the already slow modem connections of the time. So the answer was to use a compression algorithm that combined with image parameters to form and encode multiple, multiple image frames into a single image file that a software could play in an animated sequence. Sounds familiar, right? Then in 1991, when the World Wide Web was released, the GIF became a standard among developers. Everyone was writing software that supported it because it was so easy to use and communicate with uh, faster among different computers. Um, the release of browsers like Netscape in 94 and then Microsoft Windows in 95 automatically animated GIF files. So there was a great popularity for GIFs then. However, the GIF was made with a piece of code that had a patent on it. And that was owned by an American global information technology company called Unisys Corp, which was charging people to use that piece of code. And so GIF popularity went down as developers tried to create solutions and alternatives of compression algorithm and formats that wouldn't require them to pay a fee. But um, even though the GIF almost became obsolete because of that, none of these other alternatives really substituted it. Um, no one found a way to really um, do the same that GIFs were doing, which is this um, eternal, infinite, silent looping image that automatically plays. A lot of the new formats that came out like PNG did a great job for static images, but nothing quite like the GIF. And so um, when Google, Wikipedia, YouTube, and the first social media platforms like MySpace and Facebook were being launched and encouraging information sharing and demanding better load times, GIFs became popular again. And they were still around by then um, as a viable solution because nothing really came along to replace its animation style. And in 2004, when the patent for using GIFs algorithm finally expired, GIFs re-entered the public domain for good. Right after that, uh, in the early 2000s, other platforms, for example, like Tumblr, were enabling users to upload sets of GIFs such as sets of 10 and craft complex images with that, that they wouldn't have otherwise done with just text or static images or emojis. Tumblr was also enabling users to respond to each other and send comments um, in the format of GIFs. So this started a trend that we know today as the reaction GIF and is today really booming. And another reason for that is because GIFs, um, when they are completely extracted from their context and do not undermine the, for example, movie they came from, can be used with no copyright issues. So that opens a really wide landscape of human emotions that we can explore when we're trying to react to each other online. That is one of the reasons why brands love GIFs. And in the GIF renaissance in the 2010s, Giphy was launched, which is an American online database and search engine that allows users to find and create their own animated looping images. The funny thing is that lots of the GIFs in there today are not really GIFs, technically speaking. They are just images coded to behave like GIFs. And that's interesting because GIFs have transcended their original purpose, which was to compress image to become a means of itself. Today is the current era of GIF is an era when GIF is really booming. Its popularity is 
has never been higher and probably one testament to that is the fact that Facebook acquired this database called Giphy in 2020. What's going to happen with that is to be seen, uh, but one thing is for sure, marketers are keeping an eye on this trend. There are many ways in which brands will benefit from using GIFs and are already. And if you want to learn the ins and outs, the best practices, the recommendations from some of the best in the industry, I invite you to come over to wearedistillery.co. We're sharing a lot of material on how you can GIF your brand um, boost when it comes to your content marketing. And my colleague, our social media strategist shared his best tips. I really recommend you have a read. So I hope to see you there. Bye.